Welcome to story time. I'm Pear, and today I'll be reading a classic fairy tale, Hansel and Gretel. And I'll be helping. I didn't ask for your help, Orange. Well, you're getting it anyway. <laughs> uh, great. All right. Once upon a time, there were two children named Hansel and Gretel. And they were really sad because their names were funky. <laughs> Orange, if you don't know the story, then don't say anything. What was that? Nothing. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, now their mean stepmother hatched a plot to ditch them out in the woods. Wow, that's a ditchy thing to do. <laughs> but Hansel and Gretel were smart. On the ground behind them, they left a trail of Reese's Pieces. What? No, breadcrumbs. Nah, -uh, I remember this. It was Reese's Pieces and E.T. thought they were delicious. Mmm, chocolate. What? Dude, that didn't happen. Sure did. And then Hansel and Gretel and E.T. had a dance party. And E.T. showed them his greatest move, the No Pants Dance. <laughs> yeah! Dude! That didn't happen! It did too! E.T. didn't have any pants on, so that's why they called it the No Pants Dance. No! Not that. E.T. has nothing to do with this. Yo, what you talking about? We're doing Hansel and Gretel! Oh, right. Oh. <laughs> okay, anyway. Hansel and Gretel get lost in the woods despite the trail they left on the ground. Because E.T. ate the Reese's Pieces. Ah! But they soon came upon a house made of candy that's just incredible. And edible. <laughs> that's right. They start eating the house and suddenly a mean old witch comes out and grabs them and flies them across the sky in front of the moon on her bicycle. No, that's E.T., Orange. Oh, yeah, whoops. I meant a DeLorean. She doesn't do that either, dude. Oh. Pterodactyl, that's right. Hey! There is no pterodactyl! Can you let me finish? Okay, okay. Uh, so the witch takes the kids inside the candy house. Once inside, she tells Hansel to get into the... Griddle! No, it's the oven, but close enough. And so Hansel's super confused now because the witch wants him to stand on top of his sister for some reason. Her name is Gretel. Yeah, that's what I said. You said Gretel. Her name is Gretel. Right! Gretel! 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 We're saying the same exact thing, Pear. We are not! <laughs> Would you let me finish the story? Okay, okay. Just don't say something you'll read Gretel! <laughs> <laughs> Hansel and Gretel come up with a plan to trick the mean old witch. Ooh, pranks! This is the part where they trick the witch into sitting on a whoopee cushion, right? <laughs> No, dude. Oh, oh, they tricked her into clicking on a video that was actually a wreck roll. What are you talking about? Yeah, and then they tricked her into eating a cake filled with boogers. What? Oh, gross, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Would you knock it off right now and just let me finish the story? Jeez, okay. <laughs> so Hansel and Gretel come up with a plan to trick the witch into climbing into the oven. They flip it on, and voila! They're saved from the witch! Witch witch! Um, the witch we've been talking about this whole time? Witch is witch witch again? Oh, I see. You're just saying the word witch a bunch. But witch witch is witch! Stop it! <laughs> Anyway, Hansel and Gretel get rid of the witch and they... They phoned home! No! That is E.T. <laughs> they phoned home and got to go back to their home planet and they ate a bunch of Reese's Pieces. No, that didn't happen. Yaha! E.T. and Pterodactyl were there too and they ate Reese's Pieces and they danced the No Pants Dance till the end of time. That isn't how the story ends. Yaha! Yes it is! Yes it no. is! The end! Oh. <laughs> Orange! Welcome, everyone. I've got my cup of cocoa here, and this should be a very relaxing, pleasant story time with hair and orange. <laughs> Goody. Uh, today, I'll be reading you the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Nah, we don't need no stinking book. Hey. I know this story by heart. <laughs> uh, do you? Because last time... Once upon a time, there was a young girl named Goldilocks. She was named that because her hair wasn't actually hair at all. Just a bunch of bike chain locks. What? And she had a couple of gold teeth that were super tough looking. What? Um, excuse me, Pear. Who's telling the story? Uh, it's supposed to be me telling the story. And yet, here I am telling it. <laughs> Anywho, after a long day of keeping bikes secure outside the local elementary school, Goldilocks went for a ride into the woods and came upon a house. Nobody seemed to be home, so she went inside like a total creeper. 
Inside were three chairs. One small chair, one large chair, and one medium chair. Nope, they were all the same size. Goldilocks sat down in the first chair, and suddenly arm shackles sprang out, and the thing came down and clapped on her head, and she realized she was in an electric chair. What? And at this point, she said to herself, this chair is too electrified. So she moved on to the next chair. Oh, good grief. She sat in the next one, and it was very comfortable until she found a lever on the side, and she pulled it, and it turned out to be an ejector seat. You are making this up. Nah, Goldilocks got ejected up like a zillion feet into the air. Finally, she was wearing her squirrel wingsuit, though, and flew right back into the house safely so she could sit in the third chair. I can't wait to hear what crazy thing you have planned for this third chair. <laughs> Nothing crazy. The chair was perfectly normal, and Goldilocks realized this chair is just right. Okay, good. Now we're getting the story back on track. Now you didn't let me finish, Pear. Goldilocks realized this chair is just right. Up another lever, which she pulled and got ejected up into the stratosphere. What? Yeah, she orbited the Earth a couple times up there because luckily she had her spacesuit with her. How many suits does this girl have? And then she squirrel suited back to the house. Ugh. Buzzing an air traffic control tower along the way, making a sonic boom right next to them as a prank. <laughs> Goldilocks! So Goldilocks flew back to the house, kept walking through it, and came upon three boom boxes. Boom boxes? Boom boxes, Pear. You know, from the 90s. Yeah, I know what they are. I just didn't realize there were boom boxes in the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. There sure are. See, there was one small boom box, one big boom box, and one medium boom box. Goldilocks turned on the first one, and it was playing 90s hip hop, and she started bugging out to it. Bugging out to it? Uh-huh. Then she tried the bigger boom box, and that music was even more bug outable, and she started dancing like crazy. Girl was out of control, Pear. All right, now let me guess. She played the third medium-sized boom box, and the music was just right. Nope, she didn't make it to the third boom box. The three bears came home, and they were angry. So they ate her. They ate Goldilocks? Um, yeah. Because they're bears, and that's what bears do. I did mention they were bears, right? Yes, you mentioned that there were bears. It's just, that's the end of the story? Goldilocks gets eaten while bugging out to 90s hip hop? No, that's not the end. Okay, good. See, remember all those school kids who depended on Goldilocks to secure their bikes during the school day? Yeah. Well, with Goldilocks gone, all their bikes got stolen, and they had to walk home from school. Okay. And they decided to take a shortcut through the woods where they all met up with some bears, and they all got eaten too. What? Yeah, and actually the bears went on to eat everyone. And soon bears overtook the world and created a society where everyone bugs out all the time. The end. Yeah. Uh, Orange, I'm reading the book next time. You hear me? Orange? Orange? Oh, where the heck did you... Sonic Boom! Wow! Oh! Ah! Welcome to Storytime with Pear. Orange is out buying a new kazoo right now, so we shouldn't have any unwelcome interruptions as we read the story of the three little pigs. Ahem. Once upon a time, black. Orange discovered online shopping and bought a kazoo from home! Woohoo! No! Sorry, Pear, but this orange is round in shape and round the kitchen. <laughs> Ooh! The three little pigs! I love telling this story! Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Uh, fine. Just tell it the way it's written, though, okay? Please! Not a chance! <laughs> I got this, straight out the dome, yo. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. And each of these pigs had a little piggy house to help keep them safe from a big, bad worm. <laughs> no, it's not a worm, it's a wolf. <laughs> wolf, right, sorry, I read that wrong. You aren't reading anything. <laughs> so the piggies find out this wolf is coming and they all run to their houses. The first little pig, he built his house out of boogers. <laughs> Excuse me? I I'm sorry, I know you prefer the French pronunciation. Boogers. It's not the pronunciation I have issues with, dude. The first little pig made his house out of straw. Oh, well, in my version, he uses a straw. That's how he gets the boogers that are way in there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So the wolf's all like, Booger Pig, Booger Pig, let me come in. And the Booger Pig's like, not by the booger on my chinny chin chin. And the wolf's like, what else? That's fine, I'll just hop and pop and I'll blow your house up. What? And he did. The Booger House went up like a torch. People three states over were getting bits of boogers falling in their soup like crazy. <laughs> Orange. Okay, okay, I'll move on. So the wolf went to the second pig's house, 
Now this pig built his house out of sticks. No, actually he built it way better than that. Second pig built his house to code and adhere to the OSAJ regulations. Oh, wow. Okay, I didn't expect that. And let me tell you, neither did the wolf. He showed up and was really impressed by the quality siding OSHA Pig used. So naturally, Wolf wanted to get the name of OSHA Pig's general contractor. So he said, OSHA Pig, OSHA Pig, let me come in. And OSHA Pig's like, not by the hair of my skinny shin shingles. <laughs> no, brother. Then the wolf goes, then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house up. And let me guess, it didn't work because the house was well built and up to code. Not even close. Wolf used a ton of TNT. That house was gone, baby, gone. <laughs> Orange. The whole moral of this story is how taking your time and building a proper house pays off in the end. Jeez, Pear, there's still a third pig we haven't even talked about yet. Let me finish. Yeah, all right, I guess you're right. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Any hoosies, the wolf goes to the third pig's house. Can you guess what his house was made of? Well, in the book, it's bricks. Well, in my mind, it's Bruce Willis's. I'm sorry, the pig's house is made out of Bruce Willis, the actor? Yep, a whole bunch of them. This makes no sense. It makes six sense if you ask me. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. This better be going somewhere, Orange. So the wolf's like, little pig, little pig. And then Bruce Willis pig cuts him off and he's all like, look, we all know where this is going. Not by the Bruce on my Willy Will Willis. Just go ahead and blow up my house, okay? And the wolf's like, you asked for it. Here it comes. And? And he does. Uh, he blows up the house. The final house blows up. That's not how it's supposed to end. Pear, you don't understand. Imagine all those Bruce Willis's flying through the air, riding the blast wave like crazy. Have you ever imagined such a thing? I can safely say I have not. Well, imagine it, darn it. Bruce Willis is flying everywhere, riding the waves, looking super tough, falling into people's soup bowls three states over. <laughs> okay, I imagined it. So, what's the moral of the story? The moral is, um, explosions are awesome. <laughs> Hey everyone, and welcome to Storytime. Orange will not be joining us today as he's busy playing with the drone he got for his birthday. So we'll be left in peaceful tranquility to read the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Oh, oh, come on, great. Orange, your drone is interrupting Storytime. Now, oh, sorry about that. I'm still learning the controls. Mm, let me try this button. Wrong button. Hmm, maybe this button? Definitely wrong button. <laughs> Let me try this one. Orange! Whoa, that drone really swept it out of here, huh? <laughs> uh. Well, since I ruined story time, let me try to help. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, right? Yes, but please do not try to help. No, I totally know this one. I have it memorized, I swear. Uh. Once upon a time, there was a queen who had a magical mirror. And each morning, the queen would ask it, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's that there inside the wall? What? And the mirror would be all like, um, that's you, dude. You're the reflection. No, wait. And then the queen would get all embarrassed because she forgot that she was talking to a mirror. Okay, and then... now stop. Hammer time. Oh, 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 Orange. Oh. That's not what the queen said to her mirror. She asked it who the fairest person in all the land was. And the mirror told her it was Snow White. Oh, that makes sense. Because this story's about Snow White, huh? Yes. And you would have known that if you hadn't called in a drone strike on our book. Well, I did. The past is the past. Get over it, Pear. Ah. Anyway, everybody thought Snow White was the prettiest lady in the whole kingdom. But what they didn't know is that she was hiding a terrible secret. She wasn't really a woman. She was seven dwarfs in a trench coat. <laughs> what? Yeah, and each of the dwarfs had a really funny name. There was Sneezy, Sleepy, Gassy, Sassy, Flashy, Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Comet, Cupid, Rudolph. Orange, I think some of those are Santa's reindeer. Right, but they were dwarf reindeer. Duh. Anyway, the rest of the dwarves were named Huey, Dewey, Louie, Chop Suey, Ronald McDonald, Grimace, Fry Guy. Orange, those aren't the names of the dwarves. Yeah, what you talking about? I mean, where's Doc? Where's Dopey? Well, you didn't let me finish all seven. Duh. You said way more than seven. Also inside the trench coat was Doc, Dopey, Mopey, Moby Dick, Dick Tracy, Tracy Morgan, Morgan Freeman. Now you're just listing celebrities. Brad Pitt, Taylor Lautner, Dwarf of the Explorer, and Pickle. What? The other dwarves were pretty sure Pickle wasn't actually a dwarf, but they were all too polite to tell him he was actually a Pickle. <laughs> okay, that's enough. They had some other dwarf friends too, and their names were- All right, stop. Collaborate and listen. Orange is back with my brand new invention. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Oh. Orange, we are so off the rails right now. According to your story, the evil queen is too stupid to know how a mirror works, and Snow White is made of like 100 dwarves in a trench coat. That sounds like an awesome story. What happens next? Nothing happens next, because that's not how the story goes. Oh, oh, I hope the story introduces more dwarves next. We do not need more dwarves. Like Donatello, Michelangelo, Raphael, Leonardo. Those are Ninja Turtles. Um, actually, they're artists of the European Renaissance pair. I'm surprised you didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Does this story have an ending or what? Because you've skipped everything important about the story of Snow White. The woodsman, the poison apple, the prince. Oh, don't worry, pair. They're all inside the trench coat, too. Ugh, fantastic. Along with a whole bunch of TNT. That is not how the story of Snow White goes. Nope, but it sure is how it flows. <laughs> Welcome to Storytime with Pear. And Orange. Today we were gonna read the story of Jack and the Beanstalk, but Orange already managed to blow that up. Totally an accident. <laughs> I'll bet. But the joke's on Orange, because I expected something like this to happen, so I memorized the story last night. Yeah. So I don't get to make up my own version of the story this week? Nope. This week we're doing the story the way it was meant to be told. <clears throat> now then. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Jack. His family was very poor, and one day their cow stopped giving milk. Because it wasn't in the mood anymore. <laughs> yeah. So Jack's mom sent him into town to sell the cow. But on his way, he came upon a man with magic beans. Jack thought the beans sounded really cool, so he traded the cow for them. So the cow went home with the man, and they- Orange, hold on. What's up? The story is about Jack, not the cow. What? I thought it was called Jack and the Cow Stock. No, it's called Jack and the Bean Stock. Really? I like mine better. So no more of this cow nonsense, okay? The cow is gone. The cow is no longer part of the story. <laughs> now, as I was saying, when Jack got home, his mom was furious that he had traded the cow for two dumb beans. She threw them out the window. Where they were eaten by another cow. No. And the cow immediately sprouted into a giant cow stock. No. <laughs> And Jack climbed the cow stock to find a giant barn in the clouds. Orange, what is it with you and cows? Too late, bear. I'm Cow Jack in this story. Yeehaw! No, why do I even try? So Jack went into the huge barn. It was like a cow feast in there. There was every kind of milk, even root beer milk. And there was every kind of delicious grass to eat. And there were so many delicious cow pies straight from the oven. Cow pies? Oh, yeah. Jack ate like 50 cow pies. I don't think you know what a cow pie is. And I don't think the giant cow who lived in the barn was very happy when she came back home to find that someone had eaten all of her cow pies. <laughs> this is the grossest story time yet. So the giant cow, she's all like, fee, fi, fo, bum. Cows are awesome and pear is dumb. Okay, she did not say that. <laughs> so the giant cow got super mad when she found Jack. Jack popped out of the normal sized cow and rode it out the door. And the giant cow started chasing them when it looked like they were goners. The cow Jack was riding brought a pterodactyl wings and started flying. What? Yeah, the giant cow fell off the edge of the clouds and fell way down to the ground. So she burst into a million tiny cows. And from that day forward, every person on Earth had their own tiny cow. Oh my God. And Jack flew home on his new cow, which turned out to be a really cool pet because it pooped out golden cow pies. Please, tell me that's the end. It is the end. Good. So, I just wanted to say, Sorry, I cow jack story time, Pear. Uh, it's fine, I guess. And I made you something to show how sorry I am. Uh, yeah, let me guess. It's TNT. Well, actually, it's not. In fact, it isn't explosive at all. Really? What is it? I baked it. Dude, that's a cow pie. Just taste it. You really like it. No, get away from me. <laughs> ah, no. Ah. Oh, no. Look out for the blast crater. Oh, oh orange. Oh, some of it got in my mouth. <laughs> story time! Story time! All right, gather around, true lovers. Oh. Here's gonna read us a really exciting story. I promise you'll be spellbound. <laughs> Little book joke there. Sorry. Uh, now today's story is called The Emperor's New Clothes, and I'm gonna tell you the way it's written right here. You're not gonna mess it up this time, right, Orange? <gasps> Me? I would never. Yes, yes you would. You do it every single time. I'm so offended. I never mess up your stories, Pear. I enhance 
them. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. <sighs> All right, here goes nothing. Once upon a time, there was an extremely vain emperor who loved to dress fashionably. He especially loved his annoying orange t-shirt. Available now online. <laughs> orange, would you stop peddling your merch? We're in the middle of a video here. All right, all right. He especially loved wearing his plain green Crocs and unbranded fanny pack. Dude, is that seriously what you think a fashionable emperor would wear? Of course not. Someone as important as an emperor would wear the all new branded annoying orange fanny pack. Orange! <laughs> Good grief. Anyway, the emperor hired two weavers who promised to make him the finest clothes he'd ever worn. Clearly they were referring to the annoying orange Halloween costume for sale online now. They were not. <laughs> they were actually lying to the emperor because they were secretly con men. They actually didn't know how to make clothes at all. Oh, sounds like they needed to buy some pre-made clothes. Have I mentioned that all annoying orange socks come pre-made? <laughs> <laughs> now, the weavers told the emperor that they were making him a special fabric. A fabric that could only be seen by smart people. Oh, oh, I can see the fabric. That means I'm smart. Orange, there is no fabric. They were lying to the emperor. They only pretended to make fabric. Oh, well, I guess that means I'm dumb. <laughs> no argument here. Now, of course, the emperor couldn't see the imaginary fabric, but he pretended he could because he didn't want the weavers to think he was too dumb to see it. So he pretended to put on the clothes mm. and went out to show off his new suit. Wait, so he was just walking around naked? He sure did. And no one in the entire <gasps> kingdom told him he was naked because they didn't want the emperor to think they were dumb for not being able to see his clothes. <laughs> I can't believe he went around naked like that. Although, come to think of it, I do that every day. Finally, one small child stepped forward and said, Your Majesty, why are you naked? And at that moment, the entire kingdom got online and purchased actual clothing from the Annoying Orange merch site. No! Yep, they all got a hold of their parents' credit cards and did it without permission. Orange, right, you stop that right now! These prices won't last forever, folks. The time to buy is now. Now I say, look how happy those people are sporting their Annoying Orange merchandise. Ah, that's it. The end. The end. Look how stylish they look with them with, wait, wait. Everybody, welcome to story time. And this episode's bound to make us splash. Yeah. Ah! What? This week's the Little Mermaid. I know it's the Little Mermaid. That's why I'm holding this book. Nah. Why read the book when we can just watch the movie? Ah, da, da, see. <laughs> I'm actually glad you brought that up, Orange, because the original fairy tale is way different from the Disney movie you probably know and love. That's okay, I guess. As long as there's a singing crab in the book. There isn't. I want a singing crab with a Jamaican accent. <laughs> Orange! Great. The book got swept away in a tidal wave. I guess now it's time to wave hello to my version, told from memory. <laughs> uh, wonderful. Once upon a time, there was a singing crab who lived on the sea. No, oh, brother. <laughs> now, this crab had a beautiful singing voice. So beautiful that some mean old sea witch was super jealous of it. Um, I think it's the little mermaid who has a beautiful singing voice in this story, dude. Yo, what you talking about? Didn't you hear Sebastian sing in the movie? Ah, da, da, see? You can't tell me that crab didn't sound fab. <laughs> okay, but you are aware that the story is about a mermaid and not a crab, right? Oh, yeah, totally. We'll get to the mermaid in a second. Don't be so crabby. <laughs> Speaking of crabby... One day, the crab went to the surface and saw a human walking around on legs. He said to himself, ooh, those legs look crab-tastic. I should get me some of those. Crabs have legs, Orange. This is exactly why the main character is supposed to be a mermaid. No, this is totally the way it goes. See, the crab went to the old sea witch and made a trade. He gave her a singing voice, and in return, she gave him additional legs to the legs he already had. <laughs> Orange! All of a sudden, this crab has legs coming out from all over the place. His back, his butt, don't even got legs coming out of his legs. <laughs> oh, we're so far away from the original story, I don't even know where to begin. I agree. Getting this story back on the rails would be quite a feat. <laughs> uh, look, are we going to check in with the Little Mermaid anytime or what? She's only the titular character. Great idea. Back to the Little Mermaid, who also paid a visit to the mean old sea witch. <laughs> That's right. The Little Mermaid traded her singing voice for human legs. And let me tell you, she got him. 
mean old sea witch did her a huge solid and gave her more legs than she even gave the crab. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh uh, yeah, the little mermaid had legs coming out of the legs on her legs. She went up onto land and tried to hit on some prince, but he was repulsed by her. Not a legs man, as it turns out. <laughs> but don't worry, it has a happy ending. The little mermaid and the crab formed a two-person soccer team. And with all those legs, they easily won the World Cup for Atlantis. And they lived happily ever after and had a bunch of leg babies. What? And the mean old sea witch, now in possession of two stellar singing voices, went on Atlantis Idol and got into the final eight before getting voted off in favor of some merboy with pink hair. Orange! Oh, and then a tidal wave swept over the entire world. The end. What? I thought you said it was a happy ending. Well, yeah. That is a happy ending. A tidal wave sweeping over the entire world is happy? Sure, because from that point on, the whole world was ah da da see, hey, ah da da see. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to story time. Today, Orange and I will be reading the story of the Ugly Duckling. I'm not sure where Orange is, but he should be here any moment. Carrying a cup of sulfuric acid, her oh, look, ah! my trip! Aha, man, I totally disintegrated today's spot. What a tragic, totally unintentional accident. <laughs> uh, I had a feeling something like this might happen. That's why I came armed today with a backup book. Sorry to disappoint you, Orange. Oh, I'm not disappointed. I brought a backup book, too. Shall we begin? Dude, that's not even the same book. You're right. Hmm, this book situation certainly puts us in a bind, doesn't it? <laughs> bind. Orange, I'm telling the story this time. Got it? You're here for color commentary only. Got it. Color commentary. And that color will definitely be orange. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm afraid of. Now then. Once upon a time, there was a baby duck who looked different from all his brothers and sisters. And man, was this dude ugly. Millennials would look at all the other cute ducklings and be all like, aww, and take Instagram photos with them. But now with this ugly duckling, when people saw this duckling, they couldn't help but bark a little in their mouths. <laughs> no, they didn't. Well, that's true. They didn't all bark in their mouths. Some of the more forward-thinking millennials decided to take pictures with Ugmo because he made them look better by comparison. <laughs> Orange, stop. There are no millennials taking selfies in the story of the ugly duckling. Yo mama's duckling so ugly, he laid down for a beauty nap and slipped into a coma. <laughs> uh, can we please get back to the real story now? Yo mama's duckling so ugly, he got dropped out for school and they find his mama for littering. <laughs> no. Anyway, the other ducklings always made fun of the ugly duckling. Whose nickname was Ugmo. His nickname was not Ugmo. Yeah, huh? It says so right here in the book. You aren't reading the right book. Oh, yeah. Well, we're being honest. I'm not even reading that book. I'm making this all up straight out the dome. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, according to the story in my mind, all throughout his childhood and high school years, Ugmo got teased for being so ugly. Okay, yeah, that's not exactly wrong. The other ducklings were mean to him and called him names. Names like Ugmo, which actually was his name. Orange. Ah. Anyway, so this teasing went on for years. Until the ducks all got back together for their high school reunion. They got to talking and realized none of them had heard from Ugmo for years. They all really hoped he'd show up because it had been a while since they'd been able to make fun of him to his face. And that's when a huge fancy limo pulled up to the reunion and Ugmo stepped out. See, he had grown up into a beautiful swan. What? No, not even close. He'd grown up to be the supermodel Cindy Crawford. Wait, wait, what, what? You're telling me a duckling grew up to be a human supermodel from the 90s? You can grow up to be anything you want to be, Pear. I'm surprised you didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, there's more. Sure, Akmo had the beautiful face of Cindy Crawford, but he was even more beautiful than that. He had Brad Pitt's abs, Taylor Lautner's biceps, Kim Kardashian's rear end, the tail of a Westminster dog show winner, the eyes of the most beautiful snake you've ever seen. Hold on! You're telling me Ugmo grew up to have the tail of a dog, the eyes of a snake, and it was beautiful because of it? Duh! I said it was a beautiful snake, didn't I? And beautiful might not even be a strong enough word. Ugmo is now so stunning, people started throwing up in their mouths because Ugmo is so beautiful to look at. One guy even started crying, Ugmo is so beautiful, but Ugmo wiped away his tears with a hundo. <laughs> I'm sorry, a hundo? A hundred dollar bill, Pear. Sheesh. Now that Ugmo was the most beautiful creature on the planet, he was super rich. So of course he had hundos up the wazoo. <laughs> I'm telling you, Ugmo was swimming in it Scrooge McDuck style. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure how this is important to the moral of the story regarding inner beauty, but... Tell me, Pear, have you ever sucked up a 
fill with a hundo? You should try, they're so absorbent. And they only cost $100. Get your hands on some if you can, folks. They work 50% better than the leading paper towel brand. <laughs> Wait, why exactly is the story turning into a commercial for $100 bills? So what you talking about? $100 bills don't need a commercial, they practically sell themselves. Oh, that's it, this video is over. Look at that absorbency. That's a clinical test right there, folks. They even sop up some beer acid. Uh-oh, no, guess not. Uh, the <laughs> end. Call in order now. Wait, no. Welcome to story time. I'm Pear, and this is my co-host, Orange. I'm also his best friend. False. One of his closest friends? Nope. His imaginary friend. If only. Today we'll be reading one of my all-time favorite stories, Beauty and the Beast. Orange, do you promise not to ruin the story? I never do. You always do. I enhance the stories. I give them a little extra juice. <laughs> Fortunately, this is one of the greatest stories of all time, so we probably won't need much juice. Now then, once upon a time, there was a prince who was beautiful on the outside, but ugly on the inside. Yeah, because he was actually a lizard person in disguise. <laughs> That's not what I mean, Orange. I mean, the prince was a really mean, rude person. And that's why he and his entire castle were put under a spell and turned into things like candlesticks and clocks. And food? Oh, were any of them turned into food? Well, maybe. I guess I don't really know what happened to every last member of the staff. Oh my gosh, Pear, do you think we're under a spell? Do you think we're actually royal people who got turned into food? No. That would explain so much. No, it wouldn't. I'm thinking I was probably the court jester, and that's why I'm so funny. Oh, if the jester was actually a lizard person in disguise, that would explain why I could touch my tongue to my eye. <laughs> Orange, stop. I will not allow this to become canon. Can we get back to the story, please? I guess. I think people lick my story better, though. <laughs> ah, anyway. Everyone was cursed to remain in their non-human forms forever, unless- What do you mean I'm gonna be this way forever? I'm not gonna get my human stuff back? My arms, my legs, my social security number? Orange, for the last time, we were never people. You are not a character in this story. All right, because they're actually lizard people. They are not lizard people. This is just a story. Hmm, maybe we should just jump to the end. Fine by me. I can't wait to get this train wreck over with. So about the ending, spoiler alert, everyone. Turns out the beast was the beauty all along, and beauty was actually the beast. What? Yep, the moral of the story is that it's a twist ending. That is not how it ends. The beast was not the beauty all along. All right, because he was a lizard person all along. He was not a lizard person. Of course he was. Think about it, Pear. Why do you think they call it a fairy tale, huh? Because lizards. It's because they're all lizards. Pear, open your eyes. No. Nah, come on. Open your eyes wide and try and touch them with your forked lizard tongue. <laughs> and we're officially off the rails in record time. Congrats, Orange. You did it again. You ruined another classic story. You think Disney will make my lizard version into a movie next? I think it'll be more likely that Disney will sue you for ruining one of the greatest stories ever told. Nah, they wouldn't do that, would they? That would be so cold-blooded. <laughs> Get it? Because lizards are cold-blooded? Oh, we are so done here. Watch me touch my tongue to my eyeball. Ah. Ah, it's stuck. It's stuck. It's stuck in the book. Ah. Ah. Welcome to story time. I'm your host, Pear. And I'm your co-host, Orange. No, for the last time, you are not my co-host. Assistant host? No. Hostess with the second mostest? No. Best friends? No. How about the only one who knows where the book is hidden? Huh? Ah! Orange, what did you do with it? I'll only tell my co-host. Fine, you're my co-host. Whatever. Now where's my book? I ate it. <laughs> now for the story of the porpoise and the pear. It's the tortoise and the hare, dude. Oh, thanks for nothing. I'll take it from here. Once upon a time, there was a hare who could run really fast and a tortoise who could not. Yeah, that tortoise was slow as shell. <laughs> One day, as the hare was making fun of the tortoise for being so slow, the tortoise decided he had had enough and challenged the hare to a fight. No, actually, it was just a foot race. Meh, nah, I like fight better. Well, fortunately, it's not up to you. Now then, hare was sure he'd win the race. But that's before the tortoise launched into a Rocky-style training montage. Yeah! Huh. Must have missed the training montage chapter of the book. Bummer, it's the best one. Lift 
lifting weights, jumping rope, running upstairs, getting leg transplants, doing push-ups. Uh, sorry, what was that? Push-ups? Oh yeah, push-ups are a staple of any good training montage. No, 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 before that. Getting leg transplants? Yes, that. Can't say I've seen a leg transplant in a training montage before. Oh, well, the tortoise totally got one. Two, actually. He paid a whole bunch of money and got Usain Bolt's legs. What? Yeah, I'm telling you, it was quite a feat. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's what happens in the book. Oh, and the tortoise went back for more transplants, too. He got Fonzie's head and the wings of a bat. <laughs> okay, now, I know this didn't happen in the book. I mean, look at him. He's barely even a tortoise anymore. Uh, but he is technically a tortoise. He still has the eye of the tortoise. <laughs> oh, brother. Tortoise and hair. Tortoise hair. Tortoise hair. Nation, but I actually am kind of interested to see who wins the fight. Oh, really? Spoiler alert! The fight's not even close. Because the hare falls asleep and the tortoise wins easily? Shell, no! The hare wins by a landslide! I did mention he had a cannon for an arm, right? I see. <sighs> okay, well, that's what I get for letting you take the lead on the story. Thanks for watching, everyone. We're done here. The end. Goodbye. Nah, but we haven't even gotten to the second training montage. It's the Ah, the book isn't soundproof! Ah.